Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun, this is Matthew speaking. This is Outer Wilds and I am kinda struggling to work out how to do it justice. As a reviewer there are some games that as you play them you begin to dread writing about them. Sometimes it's because the game is such a pleasant surprise you don't want to rob anyone of that thrill of discovery. Sometimes it's because the game has ideas so grand that you struggle to pin them down. And sometimes it's just because you love it so much and worry about slipping into empty hyperbole as we do with the things we love. You know, like, ah, oh, best cat ever, but she's not, is she? I mean, she sh all over our kitchen last week. Anyway, the problem I've been having with Outer Worlds is that it's all these things and more. It's a masterpiece that snuck up on me. It's a collection of ideas so clever that I can't begin to imagine the designer brain you'd need to wrangle them all. And it's a game made with love and it makes you love it. So I'm gonna do my very best to take you to the Outer Worlds without spoiling it or revealing its secrets, because the secrets are at the heart of it. It's almost a detective game in the way you unpick its universe, you just happen to be a detective who's also an astronaut, an archaeologist and banjo enthusiast, and maybe also soon to be diabetic, based on the number of marshmallows you can eat. But before launch, if you do enjoy this video, please toy with the idea of hitting the upwards thumb icon and subscribing, because people who do subscribe will discover the wonders of the universe, and people who don't, well they tend to autopilot into the sun. That's not a threat, just an observation. For starters, Outer Worlds has a concept to die for. It's Interstellar meets Groundhog Day. You are a fledgling astronaut as part of Outer Worlds' ventures, but no sooner have you gone into space than space decides to get right up in your grill. The nearby sun goes supernova and destroys everything. That's the Interstellar bit, just without that daft robot. The Groundhog Day bit is that you get to relive this day, waking up pre-launch with just 20 or so minutes until the sun throws another hissy fit. And from this point, well, the solar system is your oyster. What I love about the setup and what follows is the total lack of handholding. As far as the citizens of the universe are concerned, space isn't about to turn into a barbecue, so you're free to follow the space quest you originally set out for. This is a vague mission of discovery. Visit new planets, catch up with fellow astronauts, uncover alien civilizations, don't blow up the universe. It's Star Trek, but in a ship that looks like it was built from old barrels. Or you can actively investigate your impending Soon. Go after the few clues the starry skies do offer and see where they take you. Either way, you soon discover that nothing happens in isolation in Outer Worlds. Every new morsel of information you find points you towards the next, and from that giant swirl of seemingly unrelated events emerges a bigger picture. By the end of it, you'll stop seeing the sky as a blanket of stars, but as a field of blinking breadcrumbs, all leading to something bigger. And that's what I mean when I call Outer Worlds a detective game. It's not really about actively changing the world. I mean, there's only so much one spaceman can achieve in 20 minutes, and it'll all reset anyway. It's about layering up the facts the universe is trying to tell you until it makes sense. And if that sounds daunting, don't worry. You get the sci-fi equivalent of the privatised corkboard. Your ship's computer remembers everything you find, and clearly written clues offer good pointers of where to go next. Pick a thread, follow it, and you probably won't be disappointed. It's not dissimilar to Return of the Obra Dinn in this way. It's another game that throws a mountain of self-contained events at you and expects you to combine them to grasp a bigger story. And like Obra Dinn, Outer Worlds lets you come at its narrative tangle from any angle you want. Which planet you visit first and what you find there will dramatically alter the thrust of what you might investigate next. You might head right and think it's a game about one thing, while a friend will go left and read it differently. Of course, you'll eventually meet in the middle and see how you are both right and wrong. That it gives you this freedom without turning each piece of the puzzle into an incomprehensible mush is a triumph of execution and narrative design. Every story or history somehow makes sense no matter where you join it. Even if you stumble into the end point of a strand, there's a satisfaction in filling out the backstory, and that's some galaxy brain thinking. 
If you find the storytelling ferociously smart, wait until time turns up and begins to impact the investigation. This isn't a scavenger hunt in a static landscape, but a constantly moving universe that changes in front of your eyes, sometimes to your advantage, sometimes not. Take this planet. To me, its lattice rocks look like an easter egg, and it proves just as hollow with entire chunks of the surface crumbling into a black hole at the planet's core. The longer you leave your visit in the 20 minutes, the less planet there is to explore. Entire clues and storylines get gobbled up until the sun comes along and hits reset. Making progress here requires the brain and fingers of a speedrunner. Or how about the twin planets where the gravitational pull of one is sucking the desert from the other? As time flows, one planet's caves fill with bone-crushing sand, while the other gradually reveals its buried architecture. Just as an artistic concept, that is stunningly smart. That giant pillar of sucking sand causing you to stand and gore. And and uh, get pulled up into it if you aren't quick on the controls. But it's one of many ideas that means the solar system always has something to do, no matter where you find yourself in its timeline. It's only when you get into the depths of the adventure and a really dredging space for the last few clues that I butted heads with the time element. I sometimes had to play out the clock waiting for a second long opening to appear and one very late game difficulty spike had me looking for a clue that could have been anywhere at any time. That was the only moment the game got a bit needle in a haystack for my liking but it did throw me off for a couple of hours. But for the most part the use of the time loop is the best I've seen. I love Hitman and the Sexy Brutales looping worlds, which function like clockwork devices waiting for you to stick a spanner in the works. To see that kind of handcrafted precision extend to an entire solar system is just so ambitious, and Mobius Digital really do stick the landing, which is uh, more than could be said for me. Of course, it's not just about getting to the right place at the right time. A trip in the opening tutorial to the local science museum serves as a cute foreshadowing for the adventurous variety to come. There are alien transcripts that spiral across walls like living graffiti. There is a sinister fish which can only lead to bad things. There are mystic stones that warp gravity and stick you to the wall, and other stones that defy every other rule of physics. These quantum stones, as the game calls them, are the bedrock of the game's most satisfying puzzles, the kind of forehead slapping, of course, moments you expect from the Talos Principle or Jonathan Blow at his most devious. Honestly, you could build an entire puzzle game on these mechanics alone. But there's a layer of conundrums beyond mechanical devices that speak to a purer sense of adventure. Cracking an ancient riddle perhaps, or applying lessons learned from long dead civilizations. Outer Wilds doesn't festoon you with gadgets as the game unfolds. You have all your equipment from the outset, but you do accrue knowledge, be it scientific research or just the hearsay of fellow travellers. If you played Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and fell in love with Cass, the singing treasure map, you'll get a similar vibe here, right down to being drawn to sources of gossip by hints of music that ring out across the universe. At other times, Outer Worlds reminds me of Sea of Thieves. It's not an inspiration. Outer Worlds predates Sea of Thieves by a good five years thanks to its long road to release, but they share a lot of DNA in the way they capture that wide-eyed spirit of adventure. Both games shy away from simulation. Outer Wilds keeps ship control to a couple of thruster jets and a magic velocity match button that acts as an emergency brake. And if that's too much, autopilot is only a button tap away, uh, as long as you don't put the sun between you and your destination. Likewise, there's no fuel management faff, and fixing your ship is just a case of going to the bit with sparks coming out of it and holding a button until the sparks go away. This isn't to say that navigation is just boring filler, enough can go wrong to create exciting anecdotes, like the time I clipped a rock too hard, shattered the cockpit, and had to venture into a terrifying void with just a jetpack. Or the time I parked my ship on a landing platform, that turned out to be a gravity cannon. Or the many hundreds of time my 
oxygen was running low, forcing me into a dazzling series of John Carter of Mars long jumps to make it back to the cockpit. If I could change one thing, I would like the option to manually remove my helmet to force a death if I've really screwed up that particular time loop, but that might be a bit too sinister for the game's general tone. Outside of your ship, you only have a couple of gadgets to worry about. A signal scope acts as a telescope and picks up distant sounds to serve as a where should I go next machine. Follow any mystery sound and you're bound to pick up the thread of a story. And there's the translator for breaking down alien text. Not exciting in itself, but it does let me give a quick shout out to the fantastic writing, which is short, to the point, and packed with sweet characters. <laughs> if only the same could be said of this video. Even though 99% of the people you are reading about are long since dead, they come to vivid life and make some quite chewy sci-fi concepts feel very approachable. And finally there's the probe, going to places you can't to send back photos, highlight toxic gases and some other stuff you'll have to find out for yourself. Oh boy, I'm really jealous that you get to discover all this afresh. I guess a wider point to be made is that Outer Wilds isn't meant to be elite or no man's sky, it has no interest in capturing the bloody hard work of space travel. This is the childhood fantasy version, where you can spot a glint of adventure on the horizon and be touching down by it in minutes, ready to see what's in store. It's the version where you drop through thick atmosphere and discover what fresh hell awaits you. It's the version where you make desperate spacewalks as a black hole chews up the stable ground around you, or the version where you simply find a quiet spot to enjoy the end of the universe. And if those sights and sounds blew you away, well, they're all about to happen again. That's the true magic of the game. All the incredible things I've seen are only ever 20 minutes away from that tiny little campfire on Timber Hearth. Of course, you'll get to the bottom of all this eventually, but what's the rush? Outer Wilds is a game with a ticking time bomb at the heart of the universe, but you've got all the time in the world to enjoy it. Relish it, I know that I certainly did. And that's why I think you should be climbing into your spacesuit when the game arrives on the 30th of May. It's quite simply the best adventure I've had since Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is one of my all-time favourites. Hopefully this video has explained why I dig it without giving too much away. Like I said, a big part of its magic is how much of this comes out of nowhere. If you do have any questions about more specific things, pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And please do give the video a like, it helps with the dread algorithm and also makes me feel warm and tingly inside like I've just gobbled a toasty marshmallow. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon. Bye for now.